everybody. I want to take this opportunity to say a very big thank you to all the people who left such kind messages after last week's episode. In case you missed it, I was called home by my brother because our mum, who's been suffering from Parkinson's for a decade, was really coming towards the end. So I jumped on a plane and went straight back to the UK, which is where I am now. And I left Jamie and Millie on the boat. I asked Jamie to stay there and to carry on pursuing our dream because I knew that's what I needed to help me get through. And all those words from you guys and from everyone at Patreon and across our social media has really helped both of us through this last week. So here we are, I'm in the UK, Jamie's in Malaysia, but I'm expecting to get back to him in the next couple of weeks. Right now we've got a video for you all about Lumut, the place where I left him. Uh, there are a couple of scenes that you're going to see me because they were filmed just before I left. But quite a lot of this episode is going to be about an Oyster 435 refit, something some of you may be familiar with. Yes, this is Panko Marina, we copy. Um, we have found your berth. Um, if you want to bow in, it's a long berth, bow in starboard side. <laughs> shoulder you should be able to see the island of Pankor where we were and now of course we're in the marina here which means of course also we are on the mainland of Malaysia but it's not quite the mainland because this whole area here is a reclaimed island and it's Pankor Island Marina now the only one in this area it has a really good hard stand area so we're thinking perhaps we may haul out don't know when we come back round good place to anchor beautiful day let's go and have a look at Lumut as you can see it's pretty bright at the moment and it's mid-afternoon just thought I'd give you a quick glimpse of Lumut town centre it's actually quite a nice little town it's got a nice feel to it it is uh, Harry Raya at the moment which is Eid celebration Ramadan celebration so pretty much everything is closed except this restaurant here and this restaurant here. So we're going to take Brian and Maureen out for dinner this evening at this restaurant. But I just wanted to show you this street because it has an almost continental feel to it. And uh, the, the town itself is quite a pretty town. And uh, because Brian and Maureen live here, we're just interested to know what it, what it would be like to live here as expats. And um, as I say, it's a pretty cool place. I like it a lot. There's famous for anchovies around here and there are lots of shops selling big piles of dried anchovies. They're particularly tasty when you fry them up in a wok with a bit of oil and then you let them uh, cool down and they make a very nice snack to go with your beer. This is the old marina area which is just around the corner from the new marina where we're currently staying and uh, it's, it's a whole complex that's done out with a, obviously a nautical theme. You've got concrete dolphins and whales coming out of the ground. Uh, there's a building you can see just behind me there. Looks like a submarine. There's a battleship moored up here, but here is the old marina. And you can still see all the pontoons are there, not being used anymore. The clubhouse is here, empty. I uh, have no idea why this is no longer used, I guess because of the new development. It's a shame because it's a really nice spot and very protected as well from the weather. Odd, it's like a ghost town.
behind me is a very familiar boat. Now, if you are long time viewers of our channel, you'll know that Liz and I spent over a year in a boatyard doing up our boat, a complete refit of an Oyster 435. It just so happens there is an Oyster 435 right behind me going through the same trials and tribulations that Liz and I went through. It's Ben and Belle, and we're gonna go and have a quick chat with them. This will be costing you, Jamie. Yep. <laughs> my name's Ben, this is my wife, Belle. Um, we're from the west coast of Australia. We bought the boat in uh, the west coast, down in Fremantle. We're from Margaret River originally. Grew up surfing and all that sort of thing. But we're a long way from the surf now. We sailed up here to Malaysia well, a year and a half ago now. I have to say, it's very, very strange walking around the hull of their boat because obviously she is identical in every single way. Uh, but more than that, they're actually peeling back the, uh, the gel coat uh, under the waterline, which is what we did as well. They've dropped their rudder, which we did. Uh, pretty much everything that you see down here is just so familiar. It's very, very strange. We're a year and a half into this refit, Jamie. Um, yeah, it's a big project. Um, it's taken a lot longer than we imagined, um, uh, you know, and cash and everything. But we're doing the work ourselves, just uh, Belle and myself. Um, we've just finished most of the interior now. We've got some wiring to do. Uh, we've got some plumbing to do. Um, the list is endless. I'm working on a wiring panel at the moment. So there's one panel. Yeah. So you can work out how it's going to look battery switches you can just like kindergarten what are the positives about doing your own refit uh, the positives I guess is you know exactly what you fixed and exactly you know if something does go wrong I guess you know that um, where to find it and where to fix it and the negatives what are the, what are the bad <laughs> things it takes three times longer <laughs> <laughs> So have you had much help here in, in Pankow? Uh, um, yeah, we have. We've, we've had a guy working on the hull for us, um, and he was really good. He's good, um, yeah. Yeah, because you're, you're peeling back the gel coat like, like we did. did. Did you have osmosis? Uh, we found a slight bit, um, but it was a good chance to even dry the hull out and strip it back to bare fiberglass. And it's dry here. It's been drying for six months, so um, uh, yeah, it's been good to do that, just to make sure, you know, there's no hidden... Robbies. Yeah. And okay, so like us, you put in a new engine, same engine. Same engine, yeah, the Beta 60. It's sitting down below on a crate, wrapped in tarps. Except so, you didn't have a, a hatch that you could open up to right, take the old engine out. Right, yeah, we had to take to the cockpit floor with, um, with the uh, um, sabre saw and cut the fiberglass floor out and uh, replace that with a false panel and everything. Um, it's been a good chance to do some other cabinetry work as well. The boat came with two heads and two showers, which we don't use, so we, we pulled out the forward um, head. Okay, Ben, forward heads, which are no longer. Right, forward heads. Okay, so there was a head just here. Um, this is the start of a workbench. We changed some through holes and closed some up. There was, I think, 16 on the boat. We didn't need to, so they've been closed up. Um, so yeah, workbench, we're gonna put spare parts in here and tools in here. Um, there's a washing machine going in here, shower here, um, bilges and everything getting painted. The doors are all coming off. That was, that was sort of... Uh, yeah, this is a problem that we had with this design right. these three doors in close proximity to each other yeah which kind of just you get trapped in them don't you it's like musical doors you can get stuck so they're all coming out there's not enough space for it a new countertop under here a lot of the 435s we looked at had uh, the engine here obviously but they also had built above it a kind of compartment which would contain all manner of things. It could be a fridge, could be uh, one boat we went on that had a generator. These guys also had this filled in as well and uh, they have taken a leaf out of our design and opened this up. And obviously this does two major things. The first is it gives a much greater idea of uh, space 
Uh, but more importantly, it now means that you can gain access to the top of the engine, which is really useful. So uh, they've done a good job here on making this new surface here, putting in these uh, grab handles, uh, which also gives some support to the cockpit, and it just gives it that feeling of, uh, of openness. Good job. No expense spared in their cabin. You can see they've gone for this extremely expensive inflatable uh, mattress. Uh, it's top of the line that, Ben, isn't it? It is, yes. Master cabin, this is where people sleep. Really good night to sleep on one of these. You know. And of course you've got to make sure you've uh, vacuumed up all the fiberglass particles at the end of the day. Yeah, it's hard to see at the moment, but there's a lot of fiberglass work that's been done under the floor. And you know what fiberglass is like inside a boat. And then when it gets on your skin, itchy, you know, masks and everything, but it's pretty uh, habitable at the moment. So here in the cabin, uh, not, not too different to ours actually, it's pretty much the same design. Obviously we built up uh, some boxing uh, on either side, which retrofitted, so the original design is almost identical and they've, uh, they've varnished in here already and I'm pleased to see they've gone for a very nice sort of satin matte varnish rather than a high gloss. Personally, I think it looks better than high gloss, um, but they've done a great job. And you used, uh, didn't use foam to paint on your... Yeah, we used foam brushes. Um, and that was a good discovery. It was hard to get uh, a decent paintbrush here, you know, one that you can look after. But we experimented and we found the, uh, a good sort of close off foam that we could use. And uh, yeah, the finish comes out really good. There's no brush strokes from there. And we used good epiphanes varnish, so that, that helped. So up on deck, again, it's very similar. Um, of course, the main thing is, is that we are a catch rig with a coach roof, whereas these guys are slooped and a deck saloon. So they have uh, slight, uh, fewer deck fittings than us, but still a fair amount to work their way through. Their teak is in pretty good nick, although Ben did point out just a couple of spots where water had got underneath. But uh, on the whole, she's, uh, she's looking pretty good up on deck. And uh, I think they've pretty much done all the work they need to do up here, apart from get the mask back in. What would you say to anyone out there thinking of doing a refit in Malaysia or specifically in Pankor Marine? Yeah, go for it. Um, uh, especially here, I don't know if you can see we're under a shed. So, you know, we're out of the sun and in the afternoons we get a breeze come through and um, uh, yeah, the price is good. Um, you know, there's trades here. It's been very long, <laughs> but uh, it's been good. It's a nice place to work and get out working ship shape condition. Um, it's frustrating being um, away from places that you can buy all that you need, you know, just the 316 stainless steel screws and nuts and bolts and things like that. We have to order them from home. Um, you know, just basic things. But um, yeah, if you've got the time, then you can order in and, and get what you need. So that's good. Um, it's, it's been really good, been enjoying it. Well, the main thing is you're still smiling. <laughs> or, or is that a grimace? You can't look out. No, you've got to keep smiling, otherwise it's all just too hard. <laughs> Wise words. Yeah. yeah.